Fatherhood is a journey of love, guidance, and devotion. In his new book, Why Fathers Cry at Night, a memoir in love, poems, recipes, letters, and remembrances, New York Times bestselling author and Newbery winner Kwame Alexander shares a moving self-portrait of a, a growing man navigating love, learning from his parents, exploring his own relationships, and reflecting on his past to better understand his daughters and himself. Joining us now is Kwame Alexander. So good to have you, sir. We do appreciate it. And happy early Father's Day to you. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. Right off the bat, what inspired you to write your memoir as this blend of love, poems, recipes, letters, and remembrances? You know, I think of it sort of like parenting. At any given time, you're making dinner, you're helping with homework, <laughs> you're answering the phone, you're sort of juggling all these different things. And as I've been wrestling with trying to understand my role as a father, trying to be a good dad, a better dad, my role as a son, trying to ask questions to my father that I've been so afraid to ask, it just felt like the the right way to, to approach, you know, this sort of identity journey that I'm on. It's also a great way to read, too, because it's 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 not a long story. It's not the same thing page after page. I find myself flipping through catching the, the title of something and reading it. Um, in part, you write, I am the father of two daughters. I have walked in the joy of their golden feet and sometimes stumbled off the mountain of their precious hearts, which is a really beautiful way to say it. How important was it for you to share not only the highlights of fatherhood, but as we all know, there are also some tough moments too, and sometimes they go hand in hand together. Look, parenting is the hardest thing I've ever done. Yep. And I know looking back on my childhood, I got so many questions. I've been so judgmental on my own parents. And I know that in a few years, my daughters are going to be judgmental, you know, towards me. They're going to look at me and begin to try to unravel. Why did our dad do this? How did he love? You know, when I think about divorce and, you know, my my two the two the two women who I loved and who loved me, I want to change the narrative for my kids so that when when they get older, they can look back and say, well, it wasn't just about the thing that ended the marriage. It was about some joys, some loves, some hope, some dreams coming true that they built together. So I kind of want to change the narrative for my daughter so they have a better understanding of how their father loved and how he loves. Hey, you mentioned your own dad. The memoir delves into the ups and downs of your own relationship with your father. What impact has that, and it sounds, I'm sounding like a therapist here, I'm sorry. What impact has that had on, uh, on your relationship with your dad, writing all of this? Look, you're a son. So I'm sure you get it. It's 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 a constant journey in trying to understand the woes and wonders of 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 having a father and 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 dealing with that. And the beautiful thing that I've learned from writing this book, you know, one of the things I complained about was I never heard my dad say I love you. Hmm. Like I never heard him say it in all my years. And I wrote about that. I talked about that in interviews. And one day I got a random text from my father who's who's learned how to use the iPad with with his emojis and everything. And he randomly says, my parents never said I loved you to me. And he said, I knew they loved me because when I was in the Air Force at Ellsworth Air Force Base, 2,500 miles away, my mother wrote me a letter every day. My father never wrote me, but I knew that he loved me because he was the one who went and bought the stamps and mailed the letters for her. So we sort of learn how to parent from our from our parents Absolutely. and he learned how to parent from his father from his father from i bet his you mother. say i love you to your I daughters decided, all the time now <laughs> yeah i decided to extend a little bit of grace because I want my kids to do that for me. Oh, absolutely. We all should be so lucky. Um, I love your writing style. This isn't really a question. I just want to read something that I have here that I thought was so beautiful in the way you did it. It's, it's from Without You. Uh, and Ooh. you write, um, I don't know what you're writing about, who you're writing about, but you write, I am lost, as in isolated, unfinished, broken off, shipwrecked on the shore of solitude, ankle deep in possibility. I have read the dictionary twice and I still and still there are no words to fill in the blank spaces. What a beautiful mm. way to say that. And what a beautiful reading. Oh, that well, was excellent, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, in, in September of 2017, my mother passed away. Um, a few months later, I started you know, seeing the cracks in my marriage um, and, and just some familial uh, challenges that were taking place at the same time that my career was sort of taking off. And I just, but I couldn't sleep and I didn't know what was going on. And so I had to sort of take a step back and look at my personal life and what was going on and what I was missing and what I was longing for. And I think that poem, you know, 
comes out of that feeling. Yeah, I just love when you say I have I, I've read the dictionary and then there's that big space and you say twice. Um, it's just very clever. You're look, you're a New York Times bestseller for a reason. This 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 book is great. I'm wondering just lastly, what what do you hope uh, people take away from why fathers cry at night? You know, we live in this space of just this toxic, toxic, um, you know, this crisis in masculinity and how important it is for 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 men in particular to be vulnerable, to share, to be open. I haven't been that person for so long, and I realize it hasn't served me in my relationships. Here's what I believe. Vulnerability breeds authenticity. Authenticity creates a healthier relationship to ourselves, to the people who love us, and to the people we love. And that's where I want to be. And I hope that's something that readers can get, can glimpse from this, this book. Yeah, well, I can't write that fast enough. I'm going to have to play it back. That was really good. Um, Kwame, th- thank you so much. This, this, this book is, is fantastic. It's really introspective in a way that yeah, not a lot of people are. Um, Why Fathers Cry at Night, a memoir and love poems, recipes, letters, and remembrances is out now wherever books are sold. Thank you, sir. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.